Hello and welcome to part 5 to limited company accounts focusing on the uh, AQA7127 specification. In this video what I'll be going through is the formats that you need to be aware of for the income statement, statement of changes in equity and the statement of financial position. So to start off with the limited company income statement, the initial part of sales, cost of sales, gross profit, additional income and expenses all stays the same. Okay, so right from the start all the way to the bottom till the expenses section, everything stays absolutely the same. Normally you would finish off the income statement with a profit figure. Okay, so your profit for the year. However, you would still normally calculate that for a limited uh, company. The only difference is what would be for a sole trader as their profit for the year. For a limited company, it would be profit from operations. Okay, so a limited company is required to report the profit they have generated from normal operations. Okay, and you'll see what follows thereafter. So, next is finance costs, and finance costs are typically the uh, cost of borrowing, so the cost of financing a loan or the cost of financing a debenture, interest, okay, and you can see that is deducted, which leaves you with profit for the year before tax. You then takes your, you then deduct your tax provision and you are left with profit for the year after tax. So the income statement is pretty much the same, you work out your what would be your profit for the year? It's actually called profit from operations. Labeling is very important. So that's your profit from operations, your bot your bottom profit figure, minus minus finance costs, which is your profit before tax, minus your tax provision, and you are left with your profit after tax. The taxation figure on on that note is um you're, you're not required as an AQA student studying the uh, A-level in accounting, you're not required to understand the uh, calculations for tax, so these figures will be given to you. The next format that you need to be aware of is the statement of changes in equity, and this statement is it's more of a table really that supports the financial position. So before you start drafting the financial position, you draft a statement of changes in equity. And what it shows is how has equity changed from the start of the year to the end of the year. So the financing of a company. Okay, how has it changed from the start? What was it at the start? What has changed? And what is the end picture? Okay. Now, for this kind of question, you may be expected to do a full statement. You may be expected to do an extract. Just how with an income statement, they might say to you, you know, work from gross profit till profit after tax. You might not need to do the full. It might be already started for you. Same with the statement of changes in equity. They may just say, oh, we only want retained earnings done. We just want this section done. Just this. Okay. Or they may get you to do two or three or the full thing. Just really depends on what they fancy testing you on. So what does the statement of changes in equity show? It shows equity, which is just ordinary shares, share premium, retained earnings, which is profit, profit from previous years, and revaluation reserve. Okay, so you know what this is, ordinary shares, share premium, anything that's been sold above par. So you, for example, if you sell a share for 25p and 20p is nominal value, the 20p will be here and the 5p will be here. It's got to be split. Okay, you can't put 25, don't put 25p in there, put 20p in there and put the rest, the extra 5p into share premium. Retained earnings is basically profits from previous years, so you could have, you know, it's a bit like a savings account. How much did you have at the start of a month? How much did you put in and how much do you have left? That's how retained earnings work. It is basically profits, it's profits, you know, um, a, a, you know, a, a figure on the books. How much profit have you made? How much profit do you have from previous years? 
add in the profit for the current year and then you have the profit in total okay i'll talk you more through about this in a moment uh, and then you have revaluation reserve which as i mentioned in a previous video if an asset is revalued for example then that needs to be shown um, that will be shown in you know if an asset is revalued it's shown in non-current assets as premises has gone up in value but the revaluation section needs to show the same figure that's double entry okay debit nca because premises and land go up and then you credit revaluation reserve okay that is a double entry transaction you can't just show profit you know um land going up you've got to show the same in revaluation what i would do is i would memorize this table because aqa will expect you to know the columns and the rows and the headings okay so it's definitely useful to memorize let's talk you i'll talk you through this and um hopefully it should all uh, fit together so the first row we'll go right at row at a time the first row is opening balances if you have any opening balances for any of these then put them in if you don't you don't need to worry about it the next is revaluation if an asset is revalued then that figure only comes into this column so you're not going to use these three obviously opening balances use them if you have or not but revaluation you will only use where there's a symbol in the box okay and obviously as it goes up you add that increase if you sell shares and you sell shares at nominal value then any money that you receive any share ordinary share value will come in so you add if you sell if you issue some shares likewise if you sell shares above par value then the above par value the premium value will come into this box over here now what is this minus here and this minus here these two are linked the minus and the minus okay they are linked the plus is only to do with an issue of share and the plus here is to do with an issue of share ordinary value above par this minus and here is to do with a bonus issue okay so this here and this here it can be a minus only when a business is issuing a bonus um, when a business is issu issuing bonus shares and they are using reserves to capitalize that so i mentioned it in a previous video what a bonus issue of share is and what it means by capitalization of reserves simply if you're issuing free shares then share capital is going to go up but if it's going to go up that money has to come from somewhere and it will either come from share premium or the revaluation reserve so refer to the previous video for more information on the rules for that okay but like i said just to clarify revaluation reserve is if there's a revaluation in the asset that is the only box that's used this is used when shares are issued this is used when shares are issued above par this minus sim these minus symbols are deducted a figure is deducted in here if we need to capitalize a bonus issue of which we'll do a minus or minus and let's just say for example minus 10 minus 10 plus 20 okay will take place in here a profit or loss that a business makes if they make a profit retained earnings go up and if they make a loss retained earnings go down the final column which is dividends paid dividends can only be paid from retained earnings so that's a minus there i.e dividends are paid from profits and profits are for investors then you add and minus respectively to work out the closing figures and you can work across to work out the totals and add them all up and minus them all to work out the total figure there this is just the total column and this is just the total column as well okay like i mentioned this particular statement of changes in equity this will support the financial position equity section so you draft this first and then 
all of these figures at the bottom, these headings, and these figures at the bottom go straight in already for your financial position, which you'll see on the next slide. So this is your financial position, and I couldn't squeeze it, you know, um, vertically. I've had to put it horizontally. So I've, this is your top section, and after total assets comes equity. Okay, so you've got top working your way down like that. The NCA is what would normally come in sole trader, which stays the same. Current assets normally come in sole trader, which stays the same. Okay. Cash and cash equivalents for limited companies, anything that's cash or cash equivalents, such as um, money in the bank and cash, you can combine them together. Petty cash, you know, money that's in a little, in a, in a tin, that can all be grouped together as cash and cash equivalents. Um, once you have your NCA and CA, you add them up together, which gives you total assets. Normally, you know, with Sole Trader, you do it based on the accounting equation A followed by minus L and then equals C at the end. So assets followed by liabilities with capital at the end. However, here, the this is one of the preferred formats the accounting equation is rearranged where instead of it being a minus l equals c it is a equals to c plus l not minus l plus l a equals to c plus l you rearrange the equation okay so nca ca total assets then you have equity so this would normally be your c capital this is equity Ordinary shares, you can call this share capital if you want, so share capital, share premium, revaluation, and retained earnings. Okay, the first three will always be positive, retained earnings can be negative. Okay, and that's if you have, you know, losses, for example. Then you have NCL, so debentures or loans will probably typically come into here, and you can see that's the redemption date. For this particular business, these debentures need to be redeemed and paid off by 2025. Then you've got current liabilities, typically what you would expect to see. And you have tax liabilities, so this is something new. So this is your uh, tax liability, um, which, which will be given to you in the scenario. And then underneath you have cash and cash equivalent, so this could be... Uh, this could be, for example, a bank, positive bank figure, for example. Or should I say cash? This could be, you know, I can't seem to find my mask now. This could be, you know, cash, physical cash. And this could be the bank overdraft. Okay, so cash and cash equivalents is just a term to group things together. Uh, you don't want to have too many lines on a, on a financial position for a limited company being very big. You don't want to have, you don't want to show in detail too much. So you can. There are rules where you can, you know, take a bit of a shortcut and combine things together. And then you have total equity and liabilities. So if I can find my mouse, so you have NCA plus current assets gives you total assets. And then you have equity and uh, liabilities. So you add on equity plus liabilities and my mouse keeps disappearing um, 162 plus 100 262 plus 77 equals 340 so that obviously balances okay you can do it a different way you can find different um, you know formats online as long as everything is there and it matches the accounting equation whether it's a minus l equals c or vice versa that should be fine okay so that is um, the formats that you need to be aware of for uh, limited company statements. And hope that's been useful for you. Keep an eye out for uh, future coming, forthcoming videos. All right. Thank you for listening, guys.